Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to day 20 of the Ramadan Dua Accelerator. I hope that you guys can see me. I'm sitting next to the window again so I don't have my light on. It's a bit cloudy but I feel like I've been needing some grounding lately, lately and being next to a window, being able to see the sunlight even when it's chilly out is really really helpful. With that being said, we'll jump right into the Dua or today's Dua. And today's Dua is one that is actually part of a long series of Duas that were made by Prophet Ibrahim. We focused on another dua, a dua of Prophet Ibrahim السلام, earlier on in the series and Prophet Ibrahim is such an incredible example of the type of duas to make and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him <laughs> such a high status calling him his wali, his trusted friend. The dua is actually from Surah Ibrahim itself and goes as follows. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَا And the translation is as follows. My Lord, make me and those believers of my descendants keep up prayer. Our Lord, accept my prayers. Or an alternative translation could be, My Lord, make me the one who stands in prayer and from my progeny. Our Lord, accept from us our du'as. You might notice a similarity between this du'a and a prior du'a that we mentioned in the series where Prophet Ibrahim asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the du'a to accept the du'a. It's almost like there's uh, some type of insurance on the du'a that he's actually asking and really really asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept. Why do I love this du'a and what are things that we can learn from it? First like I mentioned it's part of a long series of du'as that Ibrahim salam was making or a conversation that he was having with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he actually talks about Mecca. Ibrahim alayhi salam is speaking about Mecca, this area of Mecca which previously had nobody living in it. It was a complete isolated desert and Ibrahim alayhi salam is specifically praying for this to be a city in the future where the worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be and where there would be no idols. And if you remember Ibrahim alayhi salam's story starts off with his father and his people worshipping idols. And then he goes on to talk about how he has settled his family in an area where they are able to establish prayer where the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be and so for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the believers inclined towards his family. And he goes on to mention the absolute blessing that it is that he was able, he was gifted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have Ismail and Ishaq at such an old age. And the word that he actually uses, and this is a verse preceding the verse that we read, is Alhamdulillah alladhi wahhabali. All praise to Allah, the one who gifted me. You guys, have you guys noticed how often in the du'as of prophets, the word or the reference to al-wahhab is used? Al-wahhab, the gifter, referring to Suleiman's du'a, oh Allah, gift me a kingdom that no one else will have after me. Allah, gift to us from our wives and, and descendants, our children. Al-wahhab is such a powerful name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This should be a good hint to you that this is a good du'a to be using, especially or good name in your du'as to be using, especially throughout the last 10 nights of Ramadan, which we are currently in. SubhanAllah. And I think Ibrahim alayhi salam's du'a that we are focusing on today highlights a really important aspect that we all should have our, in our du'as, which is he's focusing not on himself solely, but also his descendants. And sometimes, you guys, when we make dua, we, we make dua very selfishly. And that's okay. You're allowed to be selfish in your dua. You should want good for yourself. But make sure that you don't forget about your legacy. That one day you are going to leave and you would hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have blessed you with children who will then have children and continue the cycle of iman. And one of the duas that I make is that I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow Islam to be in my lineage until the end of time. So we, can, we can come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Ya Allah, the Prophet Islam delivered the message to us and we made sure that our children got it and they made sure that their children got it. Um, and then inshallah also receiving the blessings of what we taught, we, what you teach your children and as it continues to go on, it becomes a salqa jariya for you. I sometimes think about who was the first person or the first two people uh, in my family, from my ancestors to convert to Islam because where I'm from, it was a largely Christian and Jewish population. And so at some point in time, 
subhanallah, whether it was when Ali ibn Abi Talib was sent to Yemen or when Mu'adh ibn Jabal was sent to Yemen, someone from the ambassadors delivered the message and some at some point in time, there was a person who made the decision to become Muslim and then marry another Muslimah and led to Islam being a part of our family. And for those of you guys who are on this channel and watch the series, who are new Muslims, you get to be that person, inshallah, for your family. Another really important thing to, I think, emphasize is the fact that Ibrahim is specifically emphasizing the act of worship that is Salah. Salah is one of the most neglected acts of worship, and it's really sad to think because it's also the one that's supposed to be the most prioritized because it is one of the obligations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to us to maintain. And he is praying for us to be of those who are muqeen salah, meaning we're constantly, constantly going back to salah. We're constantly making our feet firm in our salah, right? So we don't forget it. It's not a burden to us from those who are excited to go pray, who don't negotiate their salah. And so we can ask ourselves, are we the answer to the dua? Is the way that we allow salah to be in our lives a reflection of what Ibrahim salam wanted for us? And all the prophets are the prophets that we should seek to be an example. But um, he's one that very specifically had such a high level of concern for his descendants. And actually, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is considered to be an answer to one of the du'as of Ibrahim. I hope that was helpful for you guys as a reflection, a reminder to us to constantly be making du'a for our descendants, for those who live after us and also to focus on the quality of our acts of worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope that these last 10 days of Ramadan treat you guys so well. I hope you treat them well, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the motivation, if you're lacking motivation, to stand up in prayer, stand up in dua, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from what your heart desires. If you have not already seen my video on my channel about Laylat al-Qadr, please go watch that. And of course, like always, please like this video, comment below, um, and subscribe if you have not, and I will see you in the next one, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.